Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to go through our last section of chapter one, our last review section before next we get into like legit calculus. Uh, 1.5 is titled Exponential and Logarithmic Functions. Again, you've seen some of these in the past, so this is just a refresher of some of the important um, uh, concepts as they relate to exponential and logarithmic functions. Your text goes into greater detail, um, and it's just again to refamiliarize yourself with all of these uh, past topics of mathematics. All right, so we'll start with um, the beginning exponential functions. An exponential function is when we have um, the variable in the exponent. So for example, f of x equals 2 to the x is a fairly standard exponential function. We could evaluate that at some specific um, values of x. f of 1, 2 to the first power is 2. f of 2 2 to the second power is 4, f of 3, 2 to the third power, 2 cubed is 8. Okay, then we can kind of recognize the pattern. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1028, etc. <laughs> um, we can take, uh, we can evaluate it for any uh, real number. We could look at f of 1.1, f of pi, 2 to the pith power. Um, we can have irrational values in there. Uh, we can evaluate f of 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1. Um, when you have the base uh, raised to the, whatever the base is raised to the 0 power, the answer is 1. If we get into negative values, f of negative 1, the answer doesn't flip to negative. The answer flips to a fraction. Whoops, I don't want to write the fraction yet. 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 over 2, 1 half. f of, say, negative 4 is 2 to the negative 4th power. That is... Um, 1 over 2 to the 4th, or 1 over um, 16. There we go. Okay, so there's just a quick uh, example of evaluating. Uh, if we look at a graph of an exponential function, um, they blow up. They get real big. So there's my x-axis, there's my y-axis. Let's plug in some 1, 2, 3, 4. And then on my y-axis, I'm going to go by like, um, let's go by 5s. 5, 10... 15, and 20, okay? Uh, so 2 to the 0 power, uh, I said, is 1, so that's real small. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 squared is 4, so we're right there. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the fourth power is 16. And then if I go to the next one, 2 to the fifth power is 32. So we can see that this exponential graph, um, it gets real, real big real, real fast. And then if I keep going to the left, th those negative x values give me fractions that get smaller and smaller, ever infinitely closer to the x-axis. And I'm not going to be able to draw that very well, but technically that blue line that I'm drawing is getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but never actually touching it. Two to the as big as you want it negative number is still a decimal greater than zero. Teeny tiny for big numbers, uh, but it's still positive. Never, you never actually hit the zero, uh, the, the, the x-axis. All right, there we go. Um, another little example at the bottom. So we get something a little bit funkier, uh, or function a little bit funkier. f of x equals 100 times 3 to the x over 2, and evaluate it for two specific values. So let's start with f of 4. 100 times 3 to the 4 over 2. Uh, I'll make a note here. If you multiply first, you are wrong, right? It would be incorrect to do that multiplication. 100 times 3 is 300, right? In order of operations, the exponent comes first. So even though I super want to make that a 300, it would be super wrong to do that. So uh, we'll do our exponent first. Simplify that. You get a 2. 3 squared is 9. 100 times 9 is 900. You can check and do the multiplication first. You will get a different answer. f of 10, 100 times 3 to the 10 over 2, uh, 3 to the 5th power. Now I know that 3 to the 4th is 81. If you multiply 81 times 3, you get 243. So when I do that final multiplication, 2, 4, 3, Zero, zero. Sorry about my funny looking three there. 24,300. Boom. All right. So that is um, just a quick little example there of evaluating.
Next up, we have graphs of exponential functions. Um, if the base is po uh, not positive, excuse me. If the base is greater than one, so four to the x, two to the x, uh, to the right of the y-axis, the graph blows up real big. To the left, it gets closer and closer to the x-axis. All right. Uh, if the base is uh, a fraction between zero and one, right, the base is a half or a fourth, then the graph starts out real big over to the left of the x-axis, or excuse me, to the left of the y-axis, and then we move on to positive x values, then the graph starts approaching the x-axis. Okay, uh, again, just being familiar with what they look like is always good. Next, we'll look at some rules of exponents. If I have the same base and it's a multiplication problem, I can simplify that by adding the exponents. If I have the same base and it's a division problem, I can simplify that by subtracting the exponents power to a power, the exponents multiply together. And if I have a product raised to a power, that power, it's kind of looking like distributive property, uh, but that power applies to both entries in the parentheses. It is not true, and I'm going to write the word, a giant word, false. If I have a plus b raised to the x power, that uh, does not equal a to the x plus b to the x. That is false. False. So I'm saying it now, but put it out of your brains. All right. Um, and then the last property, a to the x over b to the x. If I have a quotient where both terms in that quotient have the same exponent, you can kind of pull that exponent out and write the fraction in parentheses. And that sometimes helps with um, simplifying. All right. And then I have some examples here. There they are. All right. So let's look at these two. Pause the video if you want to try them first, or you can just watch me whiz my way through them. Uh, but I, I encourage you to, to pause sometimes and try the examples, especially while it is, in fact, review. Um, for part A, we've got 2x to the 2 thirds cubed in the numerator. So then I can use the property from up above. That cubed goes to the first term and to the second term, x to the 2 thirds cubed. I could have done that multiplication right off the bat. Um, I'm choosing to kind of show the step for this one. Um, and then the same thing in the denominator. The 4 gets the squared, the 2 exponent, and the x to the negative 1 over 3 also gets that exponent. All right. Uh, simplifying a little bit further now, 2 cubed is 8. 4 squared is 16, dealing with the whole numbers first. Now when I have my power to a power in the numerator, I multiply x to the 2 thirds times 3. The 3's cancel out, so I get x squared. And in the denominator, x to the negative 1 third times 2, right, power to a power you multiply, that is negative 2 thirds. Okay, now what do we got? Let's see, simplify a little bit further. Coefficients out in front, 8 over 16 is a half. And then I have same base, division problem, so I'm going to subtract those exponents, but I'm going to write my work off to the side because there's a negative and sometimes people make mistakes. 2 minus negative 2 thirds. So that's the same as 2 plus 2 thirds. So we're going to rewrite that as addition. And I'm going to get a common denominator so I can put those two uh, terms together. 2 is the same as 6 thirds. 6 thirds plus 2 thirds is 8 thirds. Okay, and that is a positive 8 thirds, so it stays up in the numerator, like that. So that's your answer for part A. Actually, I could also just uh, write that a little bit cleaner as x to the 8 thirds over 2. That looks a little bit better. All right, part B. Let's see what we got here. I have a, a, a something in parentheses, multiplication raised to the second power. So that uh, power to a power, we multiply x cubed squared is x to the sixth y to the negative 1 squared, y to the negative 2. Down in the denominator, we got the same thing going on. Uh, with my x in parentheses, that's x to the first power. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And y squared to the negative 2, that's going to be y to the negative 4 when you multiply them. All right, now we do the division. Simplify the x's. x to the 8th, where did that 8th eight come from? Well, subtract my exponents, 6 minus negative 2 is 8. And then uh, if I do for the y terms, negative 2 minus negative 4 is positive 2. So that's x to the 8th, y to the 2nd. I didn't write that it's positive 2. 
x to the eighth, y to the second, and then there's nothing left in the denominator. Everything pops out of the denominator because of the negative exponents. All right, there we go. Now we'll talk a little bit about logarithmic functions. Logarithmic functions always scare people because you're writing the word log inside of a math problem and it represents this thing that's kind of arbitrary and abstract. But logs and exponents relate very much to each other. The logarithmic uh, functions are just inverse, are inverses of exponential functions and we write them in a really particular way. So if I have an exponential function um, like two cubed equals eight, Right, the way that we convert that and write that as a log function, we have the log base 2 of 8 equals 3. Okay, here my base is 2, here my base is 2. The 2 is like a subscript halfway below the line. The 8 goes there, and the exponent is now like the answer to the problem. So when we, a when we, when we answer a log question, we're saying, all right, if the base is 2, and the answer is 8, what is my exponent that I need? How do I get from a 2 to an 8 using an exponent? Well, you cube it, okay? And that's how we can kind of interpret these. Um, if I have a log base um, 3 of 27, how do I go from a base of 3 to a, 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 an answer of 27 using an exponent? Well, that's also 3. 3 cubed is 27. We can even go real fancy with like fractions. Um, how do I go uh, from a log base, let's say base five, uh, and I want the answer to be 1 25th. How do you turn a five into a one over 25? Well, you raise it to the exponent of negative two. The two, the, the squared, makes it a 25, and the negative flips it down into the denominator, makes it a fraction, all right? Um, we have uh, the natural log. Um, and uh, uh, of like x, um, and that that stands for the log base e of x. Uh, and natural log comes up in lots of different places, especially in calculus. Um, we'll encounter natural logs uh, quite a bit. Um, so fam again, familiarizing yourself with that is something that is important. The, the number e e is an irrational number, but it has lots of different applications in um, various maths. Um, and what was I going with that? Oh, and then the other thing, the other shorthand that we use is uh, if we just write the log of x with no base, it is assumed that we're talking about the log base 10 of that of x. All right, now a quick look at the graph of some log functions. Okay, so we have the log base 2, natural log, and log base 10 given to us there. Um, and so that's what they that's what they look like. So our log function... Uh, it exists purely on the right side of the y-axis. Log is only defined when x is positive, right? When x is negative, it's not defined, and that's because, well, if my if my base is like two, so let's use that example. If my base is two, the log base two of um, negative four, right? How do I go from a two to a negative four? So what power do I raise two to to make the answer be negative? The answer is there isn't a number that I can use there. That answer does not exist, and so that's why we see these graphs not um, existing on the left hand of the y-axis. Just like exponential functions, logs have their own properties also. If I have the log of a product, I can break that apart into a sum of two separate logs. If I have, if I have a log of a quotient, I can break that apart into a difference of two separate logs. And then if I have a log of uh, something raised to a power, that power can drop down in front of the log term and it gets multiplied by the log term. Now, we have particular processes uh, to by which we solve equations involving exponentials and equations involving logarithmic functions. I'll go through one example of each. I have two here for exponentials, but I think I just want to do one of them for the purposes of time. Um, and and the, the, the technique that we use when the variable is in the exponent, we somehow need to get it down out of the exponent. So the technique we use is we're going to take the natural log of both sides of that equation, right? So when we're solving equations, as long as I do the same thing to both sides, um, I'm, I'm, I'm staying balanced, right? I could add 10 to both sides, I could divide both sides by 3, but that wouldn't be very helpful here. Okay, so the fancy thing that we do is we're going to say, all right, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, I'm going to take the natural log 
of each term, each expression. Right? In doing that, the natural log of 2 is just a number in my calculator. I can figure out what that is. All right? But on the left-hand side, that we have the, the property pr from the previous slide that says that this exponent up there, that can drop down in front of my log term, and we write that as multiplication. So we have x times the natural log of 5 is equal to the natural log of 2. And then to solve for x, we divide... And if I wanted to get this um, uh, approximated in my calculator, I could do that. Or I could leave it in its, in, in its exact form, the natural log of 2, divided by the natural log of 5, like that. All right, now let's look at one or two, maybe just one example, solving equations that have logarithmic functions in them. Let's look at A. And let me rewrite it first. A says the natural log of 1 over x, and they have it in parentheses, so I will too, uh, is equal to 4. Okay, and the key step with solving our logarithmic functions um, is first, if I had one like B or C, where I have log terms in more than one location, I want to condense them, push them together using the properties from the previous slide. So Part B has uh, addition, so I'm going to condense that as multiplication. So I would write the log base 10 of radical x times x. Um, and in C, it's, it's subtraction, so that pushes together as division. So it would be the natural log of 2x over, um, it ends up being x to the 6th, because that comes up, the 3 comes up as an exponent. You can read through them um, in, on OpenStax on the website. Um, if you want to see those worked out, I'd be willing to make a video, but I don't want to make this one too much longer. But once you have them pushed together as, um, as a single log term, the key is rewriting it in its exponential form. So what do I mean by that? This natural log, remember, is the log base e of that 1 over x, and it's equal to 4. Okay, so how does that help me? I've just rewritten it so that I can see what the base is. Well, remember, to, to write it in exponential form, it says the log base e. Well, the, ba the e is the base. The 4 over there by itself is the exponent. And it's equal to what we're taking the log of, 1 over x. So it says in exponential form, e to the 4th equals 1 over x. In logarithmic form, it's that or that. So what I have here, I've done some work, but what I have here is three different representations of the same um, the same thing, right? They all say the same thing. One says it in its natural log form, one says it in its log form, one says it in exponential form. But we need to do one more step um, to be fully solved for x, or kind of a little bit more than one more step. I'll write that e to the fourth over one is a fraction. No, I don't want to do it that way. Um, let me erase that. Right. I have an x in the denominator, so let's use multiplication to bring it out of the denominator. So we'll multiply by x on both sides, and we get x times e to the fourth equals 1. And to solve that, that's supposed to be an arrow, there we go. To solve for x, divide by e to the fourth. e to the fourth cancels out, and we have x equals 1 over e to the fourth power. And there's our solution there. All right, there is an overview of exponential functions and logarithmic functions. Try out the homework. Um, let me know if you have questions, if you run into problems. Thank you very much for listening, and have a wonderful day.